Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am Adele Ashley. If you've been here before, welcome back. Yeah, we're having kind of this nice day in Toronto today. It's 30 something degrees. I know they're saying it's supposed to rain a little bit, but you know, it's okay. I will take the hot days before we get into cold, cold winter um, as much as I can. So as you can tell by the title, going through everything that I have read in 2023 so far. Usually I update these monthly on my blog. However, I haven't really done that for 2023 so far, but it is something that I kind of want to get back into doing either on a monthly or quarterly basis. So I figured I will just do everything that I've read from January through to August and then bring it back for September through December on the blog as well as in a video format as well because I'd like to talk it through a little bit. Uh, so grab a drink. I have my nice hot cup of coffee and I managed to get the silk pumpkin creamer as well. So it is fall vibes. We are getting ready for autumn and let's go through everything I've read this year so far. So I do have my handy notion uh, list here just so I don't forget anything. Um, but the first book that I read was Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Uh, it was an in-person book club pick which I never would have picked for myself to read and I'm so glad that I joined my book club and then also you know willing to read such a diverse range of books because I ended up loving it. I was so intrigued about the story, what was going on. I mean, there was a section in the middle there of pioneers, which me and my book club were like, that could have been left out entirely. But overall, I absolutely loved this book from start to finish. Next, I read Big Swiss by Jen Began. So also very different from what I would usually read. I'm not really a literal, lit, literary, I cannot speak. I am not usually a literary fiction type of person. You know, definitely a romance girly. But I found this book so fascinating. I, it was actually a bad bitch book club pick, which I had heard a lot of good things about and figured I'd give it a chance and read it. And yeah, it was, <laughs> it was an experience from start to finish. And I'm so glad I read it. And honestly, um, the Bad Bitch Book Club had an author Q&A with Jen Began as well and it was so enlightening as to what the book was um, and that's all I could really say about that. Uh, next I read Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Uh, so this is a bit of an older book. It follows five um, Native Americans as they go through the residential school system in Canada and how their lives are affected so it does cover I think about 30 or 40 maybe 50 years of their life so from childhood well into adulthood and the struggles that they go through as growing up in the residential school system how they their culture got erased from them it was absolutely heartbreaking to read but and so real and I think it's the book that everyone should read. I think it's, you know, maybe should be added to the school curriculum as well instead of our very whitewashed version of events of what happened. It's definitely a book that would stick with me for years to come. And then I jumped into Finley Donovan Jumps a Gun by El Cosimano. I have loved all of the Finley Donovan books. This is the third one in the series. I usually listen to them on audiobooks so I read the listen to this one as well and it's just a fun fun light-hearted they're doing so much mess at all the time like Finley and Vera do not know up from down at any point in time they are just stumbling their way through life and somehow you know next minute they're a hitman and then they're doing this and they're running from the mob it is so funny uh and honestly one of my favorite book series if Elle were to come out with a fourth book in the series it would be immediate purchase immediate listen 
uh, I love the series that much. Then I read Begin Again by Emma Lord. So I also love Emma Lord books. She is one of those immediate purchase authors for me. It started with Tweet Cute about six years ago, I think, and I've noticed that she usually puts out a book but every other year at the beginning of the year. So some frequently Emma Lord's books are actually the first book that I read in a year. Begin Again is such a fun story. The characters are a little bit older in this one because they are in college at this point as opposed to her previous books where I believe both of them were they were high school students. But it was such a fun story about starting, starting over but also finding who you are. So our main character, she didn't get into her dream college. Her boyfriend got into their dream college. She really wants to go to her mom's alma mater and she works really hard to get into it. And then when she arrives at the school, she discovers that her boyfriend has now transferred to the community college that she was at. She's all alone and she has to kind of figure things out. There's a lot of really fun elements in it. Uh, so there's a dynamic friend group, which is so interesting and I would love to be friends with all of them. There's her RA, who's kind of this moody character, but who's also, I wouldn't quite call him Grumpy Sunshine, but he is so intriguing and so there for her in a very real way. And then there's also this kind of quest that's happening at the same time, which I found for Secret Societies, which I found so fun to read about and like honestly I would read an entire book based on what's going on in these societies because you know we get a glimpse of it but I wanted so much more throughout but all that to say it's a really good book it's more it's kind of like more like YA than adult but solid 10 out of 10 for me next I read Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan uh, and she is, this is the first Kennedy Ryan book that I've ever read. I have heard a lot of people say that she is an amazing author, but Before I Let Go was the first one of her books that I've ever picked up. I really enjoyed it. It was, I kind of went into it with no expectations and I was really blown away by how well written it was, how fleshed out the characters were, there's, I believe there's going to be two more books in the series following two of the other women in the friend group, which I'm so excited about. But essentially our main female character and our main male character are, were used to be a couple and got a divorce. They are co-parenting their two children together and kind of trying to figure out how they move forward from there, especially since they were that couple that people would not assume would be getting a divorce. They were so solid, so, you know, like that perfect love story. And then all of a sudden it just fell apart. They also have a business together that they are trying to, that they're continuing to run and they have a very good co-parenting relationship as well. It's just trying to figure out how they come back together. And the story really follows that. There's a lot of mental health representation in it that is so well done. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, three or four of the characters go to therapy and talk about being in therapy, which is absolutely amazing. And then it just kind of comes together in the perfect way, which can't really complain about that. After that, I read The, Nikki, the Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. So I found this book so thought provoking. Uh, it's definitely fiction again. And essentially the premise is that one day everyone wakes up and everyone over the age of 18 has received a box on their doorstep that contains a string. They realize that the string relates to how long your lifespan is. So different countries approach it in different ways. There's some that insist that citizens open their string up and it gets recorded. There's others that leave it up to them to decide whether or not they want to. Certain career paths you'd have to have you disclose the length of your string. Um, but essentially it really thought provoking read as you question, would you want to know what your, how long your string is and how long you had left to live and would that change how you live your life? I especially love, it's told from multiple point of views, which is some of my favorite stories is when you have this large cast of character and it's all intertwined somehow, which 
it definitely does in this book and I loved it I've recommended it to so many people it's such a great conversation starter as well just you know what would you do in this situation and would you want to know so you guys definitely should read it if you haven't already after that I read The Stand-In by Lily Chu so this was a really quick read for me it was it's marketed as a romance book but I definitely found that it was more of just a story about family. There weren't many romance elements in it. There's no um there's a happy ever after at the end but it is just kind of there. I enjoyed it. It didn't really stick with me that much. It felt like a story that I had kind of read before but either way it was still good. It was not a like a one star or two star. I think I rated it as a three star so yeah the stand-in then i read the fake by zoe whittle this i secretly love any book that involves con artists has kind of thriller vibes a psychological element to it and this had all of it so it's about this woman who pretends who goes to grief groups essentially and she cons her ways into two people's lives and they are trying to meet up together because she talks about them to each other. One is her boyfriend and the other one is her good friend. And kind of she keeps them apart for as long as possible. But eventually these people figure out that something is up here and this person may be lying to us or, you know, conning us essentially. I was hooked. <laughs> um, there were so many things that were red flags throughout that made me wonder how they did not know that she was conning them but also at the same time it's executed so well that you could believe that they don't know because both of them were in situations where they just wanted someone. One of them has lost their wife, the other is, um, if I remember correctly, the other has kind of broke it up with someone as well and so both of them are grieving these relationships and they're just looking for someone else to fill that void either way absolutely wild it is again a quick read I think I did it in like two days if even but was hooked from start to finish and then I read The Nanny so I was not expecting The Nanny to be as steamy as it was uh for a book that came from a traditional publisher it is hot it is graphic it is great there is nothing but good things i have to say for this book it is an intriguing concept uh it is someone who the nanny has previously worked um had an only fans she had a client who she spoke to quite regularly they were supposed to meet up he unexpectedly ghosted her and then she soon realizes that you know it's about a year later she goes for a nannying job and she realizes rather quickly that the person who she's nannying for is potentially this person who she had a relationship with previously online they'd never seen each other's faces and we go deal with her kind of grappling to figure out how to you know tamper down all her feelings that she has towards this person because she did feel very deeply towards them and they did need to meet up and potentially have a relationship but also how she handles the fact that she needs this job and she has this secret and does she disclose it to him does she pursue a relationship with him kind of how do things go from there i loved it it was so good and I'm so happy that my friend recommended it to me. After that, I read Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler. So this was a four star read for me. It is so beautifully written and it really talks about young love, grief and mental health. And it captures that in such a great way. So Adelaide, our main character has moved to London. She falls in love with this London boy. She's very young, it's this torrid affair. Um, she thinks that she will do anything essentially for him she starts advancing in his career he has some tragedy in his life and he starts backsliding a little bit as well as he kind of struggles with how to deal with that and grief and it is such an accurate portrayal of what it is to be young and in love but also 
to be struggling to figure out what is going on and how to support someone who is struggling mentally as well. After that, I read the plus one. So again, a lot of mental health rep in this one. I'm realizing now that that seems to be a bit of a theme in a lot of the books that I read this year, which I think is so great. There's the fake dating trope that I love. There's a little bit of enemies to lovers, which I also love as well. And, you know, the characters really don't shy away in this one from getting better. So our two characters, both of them have things in their past that have caused them to have anxiety or PTSD and both of them kind of go out and they fight for what they want and what they need and acknowledge that. Um, the fake dating trope works really well in here so it's not kind of overdone. It makes sense that they start fake dating. You know, it's my brother's best friend and we have to go to this wedding and everyone's harassing us about this and um, our female male, main character discovers that her husband is cheating and very early on sorry her boyfriend not her husband was cheating very early on in the book and of course everyone's asking her at this wedding about the fact of you know you're getting engaged soon and we go through the whole process of them slowly realizing that they maybe they do have feelings for each other but either way it was so good i also realized that it's actually the third book in a series so it's this set of standalone books i ended up just picking up number three but i did enjoy it enough that i think i am actually going to go back and read book one and book two in the series just so i could immerse myself back into that world for a little bit longer and maybe eddings writing as well and then i went into the book talk reads so i saw a whole bunch of uh posts on book talk about these books how they were great you should read them um, I picked some of them up. A lot of them were sports romances because one of my favorite subgenres is a good sports romance. And some of these were uh, two stars uh, for me. So first off, we have Offside by Avery Keelan. Uh, so I found that it was about 300 pages too long. I truly cannot remember a lot of what happens in this book um i also fell asleep multiple times while reading it so you know full night sleep middle of the day just straight asleep after that i read the fine print by lauren asher i know a lot of people like the dream one billionaires series i didn't love it i just found that it was too it dragged on and i didn't really find it believable throughout i found all the characters very whiny and i think i really questioned why they did not do more i know it's some people's like favorite series i know i think the third or fourth book in the series came out recently and i know a lot of people were really excited about that but for me it's not a series that i was looking to continue reading uh it just wasn't my favorite after that i read claiming carter by jennifer bonds so it is a uh, a college woman soccer player gets recruited by the men's football team and promised a full ride scholarship if she will be part of the team and kick for them through the year. Um, I don't know a lot about football. Um, I do think, you know, women can do a lot of things that men can do as well. So I love how there is this respectful integration of her into the team. She did need a full ride scholarship. School paying for college was a thing that they talk about a lot with her um so the Fulbright scholarship obviously helps with that I loved how both of our characters are so driven and focused on their goals so our female male female main character really wants to be a scientist our male character has this dream of he wants to win a championship he wants to go to the NF NFL as well um so i loved that they were unyielding in those goals this is what we want to do this is where we're going to go it wasn't some you know i'm just going to throw away all my goals because specifically for the female character i love how she didn't throw away her goals of being immersed in sciences because she was very stem based because now she's playing this sport and our male character also is not 
kind of a himbo, which is great. It is told from a dual point of view, which I also really enjoyed. You got to see both sides of what was going on at all times. Both characters were very respectful towards each other. There was kind of no red flags. It was a quick, easy, I think it's a Kindle Unlimited read, but it was a good read. I enjoyed it. Next, I read The Weak Side by S.J. Silvis. I really liked the idea of this book as it included some of my favorite tropes such as fake dating, forced proximity, but I did find that the pacing of it was really off and I did have to spend a lot of time kind of taking myself back and acknowledging that this was a work of fiction even though it was very much set in reality. There's just some things that happened throughout the book that got glossed over in the first couple of pages and then ended up being very very important for later on in the book and then that situation just gets resolved in such a, in a way that seems a little bit too wrapped up with a bow and you know shoved to the side and perfect world when in reality it would not be like that as much as i like the forced proximity trope there was a lot of things that were you know this would be fixed such as the whole premise is that our female main character is accidentally placed into the woman's dorm instead of sorry into the men's dorm and bunking with this hockey player as opposed to being in the female dorms realistically schools would most likely move heaven and earth to make sure that that does not continue so the administration's like oh that's okay seemed a little bit off to me i get it though it's a book and then also our main our male character who you know he's complaining about some things but he's also actively doing the thing that he's complaining about which makes it a bit like mm, maybe if you stopped doing it this wouldn't happen but either way it was a good read like I said the first 50% of the book kind of dragged a bit but then after that the pacing really picked up which I found was really good after that uh, I did the Windy City series so Mile High and the Right Move by Liz Tom Ford uh, these are sports romances. They're all set in Chicago. The first book follows a hockey player. The second book is after uh, a basketball player. And then the third book, which is coming out later this year, I believe is about baseball. They're fun, cute, quick reads. I loved it from start to finish. Our characters are seem a little bit more fleshed out. They, you know, you have your hockey player who just kind of I'm not going to settle down and then he realizes that he wants to settle down um you have your basketball player who suffers an injury and you know he's helping out of his sister's friend and you can stay by me who honestly the sister's friend i loved her in book one i'm so happy that she was book two she was such a dynamic and interesting character to me but yeah loved it from start to finish after that I read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros and I came to the realization that I love fantasy books and I think I always knew this. I loved Harry Potter as a kid. I read the entire Aragon series like I was obsessed with those books. I read Akotar last year. All four books loved it was hooked could not put it down so when i picked up fourth wing when i heard about fourth wing i kind of figured i'd read it it was a bit like oh whatever is the story there's dragons in it and i started the audiobook one day and was about a chapter or two in was walking home from picking up some groceries and was hooked like I walked through the door, I had it playing while I put away groceries, I cleaned my entire kitchen while I was doing it. I, if I had to leave the house at one point to throw garbage, I put my AirPods in so that I could continue listening to this book. I purchased the book so I could read it on my Kindle. I was obsessed, read it in less than 24 hours. I truly pre-ordered the next book almost immediately because I cannot wait until November 7th to read what continues to happen. So I did see the twist at the end coming. That last line was not a shock to me. I kind of saw it coming based on things that happened throughout, but I would definitely say, recommend reading Fourth Wing if you have not already. 
uh, it's not too fantasy fantasy where you have to find out a lot about the world and there's a lot of world building you kind of uh, Rebecca Yaros does a really good job of easing you into it so you can read it throughout um, yeah but fourth wing honestly one of the best things I read this year immediately after that I read yellow face by RF Kwong so uh, I was hooked on this from start to finish as well I bought it on a whim around Christmas and then I put it down till this summer and I ended up absolutely loving it it tackles diversity race racism and cultural appropriation in a very realistic way and does it very well I found that our main character is so annoying and it's so good that it's written from a first person point of view because we get such a great view of how she is thinking and we also see how she very much believes that nothing that she is doing is wrong even though as the reader sometimes I wanted to reach through the page and slap her and just be like what is wrong with you do you not realize that what you just said is so problematic and you're part of the problem either way I loved it my book club talked about it as well and it was such an intriguing conversation um, especially about who can write books about other cultures um, because that is one of the central themes in the book as well it's this white author writing this stealing and writing a story about Asian Americans um, but I do think it's a really great discussion piece I really think it's a really good book just to read in general and it is so well done after that I read The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. So this is a sequel, is a standalone sequel to The Soulmate Equation, but I would actually recommend reading The Soulmate Equation first if you were to pick up this book, just because it does explain a lot of the background of kind of like the, I'm completely blanking on the name of it now. Either way, it provides a lot of background information on the dating apps that they use throughout it. I do have to say it does follow around a TV show that's kind of bachelorette-esque where we have uh, Fizzy, our main female main character, who's also a romance author, who is goes on this dating show and they know what type of match she has with all these different people because of this genetic testing kind of um dating algorithm thing and she doesn't know if someone's her diamond match or if they're just like a gold match or what's going on but she goes on dates with people and they try to figure out what is going on throughout the entire thing and she has these conversations with her producer who is sounds so hot um on paper like i wish she was a real man but essentially that's kind of the story there i really enjoyed it um i can truly say that if this was a real tv show i would a hundred percent watch it it's just fun and it was a really good nice long weekend beach read i think i drank like a bottle of wine and read the book and was great i also found that it really gave me the charm offensive vibes because you do have that behind the scenes stuff happening with the with the dating show um and like there's a producer main character element going on uh it's told from a, told from dual point of views as where uh the charm offensive was not but either way very similar so if you like the charm offensive you definitely like uh the true love experiment after that i read once more was feeling by Alyssa sussman um i really loved funny you should ask and while i liked once more was feeling i found it slightly disappointing it definitely felt like a sophomore slump kind of book to me and essentially it's two teen stars who reunite after years apart for a stage play and they end up falling in love um and there's lots of history there between them it's told in a then and now perspective as well so we do see that relationship growing and falling apart in the past as well as in the present uh throughout this book i just found it kind of lacking I wanted a bit more for some of the plot points I it felt really contrived the relationship to to a certain degree felt a little bit forced to me as well I just think for a book that I love so much 
like funny you should ask I loved this one was just kind of there it was middle of the road it was a three-star read for me it was very much like take it or leave it in contrast I read the reunion by Kayla Olson which I found to have a very similar concept as once more was feeling but I found it so much more charming so once again we have two teen tv stars who reunite 20 years later for the reunion special of their hit tv show that was very similar it kind of gave me boy meets world full house kind of vibes through it and they had sparks were flying when they were kids they kind of suppress those feelings a little bit they both were young had things going on the female character kind of slips into obscurity a little bit and only does indie films whereas our male star his career just kind of skyrockets and he becomes this huge hit movie star and almost like kind of like almost like James Bond-esque and you know they come back together after 20 years they haven't spoken in a long time sparks eventually fly between them they realize that as they're filming this reunion special that the chemistry is still very much there for both of them and it's not like a day has gone by in between it's fun it's charming um it's a really good read i was rooting for them throughout i loved every minute of this book like if there was a sequel if there was we heard a story about someone else in the story i would be willing to read just about anything that happens with these characters i also read the boyfriend candidate by ashley winstead so this was uh i actually listened to this one i really enjoyed it it's cute there's big dating in it she's a librarian he's a politic political candidate they get photographed together um and then they realize that kind of the best thing for his career and his campaign is if he has uh appears to be in a relationship as opposed to just being a bachelor so they his campaign asks her to pretend to date him her sister is also a political candidate as well um sorry her sister is also a politician not a candidate and they eventually you know they have this whole fake dating relationship and eventually they realize that maybe they do want to be together i really liked how our main character she slowly comes into herself so she is content being a librarian and doing her job but she also wants more for herself and she slowly realizes through this process that you know maybe i want to advocate for certain things or go back to school and better myself and i love how it really shows her coming into her own over the course of this she starts asking for what she needs and wants from people in her life overall just a very good read i also read love theoretically by ali hazelwood so i typically enjoy ali hazelwood books as they tend to be based in the stem world and our female characters all have um they're not kind of like your typical hallmark room where it's like oh she bakes cakes all the time not that there's anything wrong with being a baker but they do uh they're not written as just this kind of head in the sky type character i do find that her books are very similar so i did know exactly what i was getting into when i was reading this however i also wish this was different because now this is the third book that i've read from ali hazelwood which is very cookie cutter very much the same there's no real different elements other than they might have moved to a different city than the previous books i would say it's probably my least favorite of all three of her books but it is still good the life hypothesis still kind of takes the cake for me it's kind of a, again another middle of the road read i also read same time next summer by annabelle monahan i really enjoyed it it very much seems uh very similar to uh, every summer after by carly fortune there's still that you know that element where these kids were together as children they move they are visiting each other in the summers at this lake house beach house um this vacation home essentially and you know it's like we had this relationship and then stuff happened i liked the reason why their relationship fell apart 
was not something I expected it very much is external forces that caused them to break up it's not some you know miscommunication on their part or you know I moved away and then I saw this it very much is something happens that is neither one of them has control over and neither one of them can stop from happening and the fact that they broke up is so realistic I really wanted her there is mental health representation in here but I did really want our main character to step away from her therapist or at least not hold on to the things that her therapist said so deeply because I do think her therapist was a little didn't have the full story potentially when she uh, was prescribing some things to her and telling her some things but overall it was a really good read I really liked it there was a part where I was like girl pick up your phone and google there are so many clues here about what is going on but either way I liked it it's told in um, a past and present as well start to finish it was a good read it was really nice it's a quick read too like I it's not a very thick book I think I read it in less than a day and then I read Hello Stranger by Catherine Center or sorry I listened to Hello Stranger by Catherine Center um, I do have the ebook of this as well because I did get a advanced copy of it but I didn't get around to it to actually reading that book however as I I was in Ottawa to pack up my grandmother's house and I listened to this book that entire time it's exactly what I expect out of a Catherine Center book we have a strong female character we have um she is coming into her own it's heartwarming it's sweet I did find with the female character I was like you are so she's an artist I found her so unobservant about the world around her uh which is kind of there's a little bit of funny elements that relate to that as well but either way I really enjoyed the book I would I will always pick up a Catherine Center book. They're some of my favorite. After that, I read Off the Map by Trish Dollar. So this is the third book in the Beck Sisters trilogy. So we follow the third sister as she goes off to Ireland for our first sister's wedding. They're very much standalones. You don't need to read the previous two to, to follow along with this one. Uh, but you do see those characters kind of come back in at points uh so our character she goes to ireland she meets up with a man who she's supposed to go to the wedding with because he's also in the wedding party they end up off-roading uh, because she's very much this nomadic adventure all the time type person and he's the opposite of that so they play they're very much opposite the trapped there they go off they do their thing and then eventually go to the wedding and she realizes that she actually wants to return home for an extended period of time and spend some time with her ailing father. I loved it, truly, but I've always loved the, the Beck Sister series by Trish Dollar is one of my favorites. So I knew going into this what I was getting and also that I would probably enjoy the story as well. After that, I read Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. I don't know if I actually like Elizabeth Acevedo books. I know a lot of people do. I tried reading one of her previous ones and just didn't really get into it. Family Lore, I did manage to stick out. I finished it from, I finished the entire book. It was a good story. I just wasn't, it was not like a five star read for me. It was middle of the road. I found myself very confused a lot of times during the book about what was going on and where it was, where it was going. So because I spent so much time thinking while I was reading the book about who this character was and trying to remember and map it all out in my brain I found that I couldn't get as immersed into the book as I normally would that being said it could also just be the time that I was reading it I also wasn't feeling very well at the time so I wouldn't use that as a full kind of analysis of the book however I do think that I I question if I would actually be willing to pick up another Elizabeth Acevedo book because this is the second one I've read that I didn't really love. And then I reread two books. I reread Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which is one of my favorite books. Um, I reread it before the movie came out. I loved it like always. It's one of my favorite stories. You know, Alex and Henry just have my heart. So I reread that at the beginning of August. And then I also reread The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. 
so this book is hefty it's definitely a slow burn i love this book so much i talk about recommend it to friends a lot it was very much a comfort read for me i was reading it in february as i kind of had a family emergency going on and as i got on the train to go to ottawa it was one of the first things that i i downloaded and started listening to it and i continued to listen or read the book kind of over two weeks when things were kind of going very downhill so yeah i that being said i love it it's a beautiful story and i love to see their growth kind of through the entire thing so that is everything that i have read for 2023 so far um i think we're clocking in about like 32 books now which is a little bit less than i've read but it's been a interesting year which is why it's a little bit slower but that being said i'm excited for everything that is coming in the, over the next four months and i will be sure to keep you updated on what i am looking forward to reading what i am reading and what i loved till next time